Hello, guys. Welcome to another session of the Own Buyer's Guide podcast. I am here with two special guests. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Brahim. Brahim. Again, this is a, a continuation of our podcast, and I do appreciate you inviting me to touch base on the different topics. Um, we have mentioned before about the process on buying and, and what today is to qualify, as well as all the different incentive and programs. I do believe it's very important for us to touch base with a mortgage expert. And today I have Susie Zoran, who actually has very close ties with uh, Royal LePage um, in Oakville. And she has assisted me in getting information before to my clients. And I do believe she's one of the best persons to touch base when it comes to the mortgage aspect. Um, and that being said, um, here is Susie. I would like to introduce her and she will be going through the process itself. And any questions you may have at the end, we'll, she'll be happy to answer. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Thank you for the introduction, Brahim and uh, Sherlyn. And uh, thank you so much for having me on this call today. Um, Sherlyn, as you mentioned, it's been a pleasure to work with you and your team over at Royal LePage Oak Park for over 10 years now. It's been uh, quite a while. So uh, as you mentioned, my name is Susie Duran, and I'm a mortgage broker at Oak Park Mortgage Group. So Oak Park Mortgage Group is a family-owned and operated business. We have a beautiful storefront location in uptown Oakville. It's, uh, it's actually just right across the street from Sherlyn's office, so this is why our partnership works out even better. Uh, what we're talking about today is first-time home buyers. So essentially, the number one most important thing that I always tell my first-time home buyers is that getting pre-approved is the number one thing to do. So in order to get pre-approved, all you have to do is fill out our application form, and uh, you can head on over to davidandsusie.ca and just click on the Apply Now tab. It's fairly simple. It takes less than 10 minutes, and the application form actually comes directly to our emails within our firm. It takes about 24 hours to turn around your application form. And uh, once we receive it, one of our team members will call you to let you know exactly what we need. So, you know, if you're self-employed, we, we collect a certain number of documents. If you work for a firm, we select, you know, certain documents that we might need from you. And what we do is we actually do a firm pre-approval up front. We can secure the rate for you. We can let you know your maximum purchase price. And honestly, like getting pre-approved is extremely important before you start shopping for a home. We want to ensure you're falling in love with a home that's in the right price range for you. Uh, this helps this you helps ensure that you're looking at homes that fit right within your budget, not over your budget. And as well, it helps you understand, you know, the certain amount of down payment that you have, how much of a home can you buy? And it makes you a more qualified and desirable, buy desirable buyer at the end of the day. Um, just to touch a little bit upon down payment, buyers need to be prepared with savings for down payment as well as their closing costs. So closing costs we approximate in Ontario at one and a half percent of the purchase price. Again, when it comes to down payment, um, everybody's scenario is very specific to them. So I always tell the clients, give us a call or email us. We'll go through your numbers when it comes to purchase price and down payment to give you an accurate number of what works for you. And then the last point I want to mention is probably the most important, actually. After you've been pre-approved, it's super important to ensure that you don't obtain any new loans or car payments because it could affect your firm approval at the end because that overall affects your total debt service ratio. Um, overall, we're here. Just happy to help with uh, getting your numbers put through and getting you approval. You can contact me anytime. My direct line is 647 eight nine eight seven eight nine four or my email which is suzy and that's s-u-z-i at oakparkmortgage.com and uh, my team and i look forward to helping you with your journey to home ownership good thank you so much suzy one question i have on my end sure. and i know that um, i'm dealing with a lot of like newcomers and mm -hmm. I know one of the process in place is trying to educate them when it comes to the length of time they need to be employed for. Uh, when it comes to the mortgage aspect of things, would you be able to touch base on that and to say, well, when it comes to a newcomer, um, what are some of the things they need to be mindful of and to be aware of before saying completing that form? Um, is there some like a time frame of like a year to two years to be employed? Uh, when not it comes necessarily. To the not necessarily. What we usually say is as long as they're not on probation, 
there's lenders uh, that will consider it. Because we're not a solo bank, we don't have like a small box that our clients have to fit into. We've got tons of different solutions. As long as you're not on probation, we have lenders that will consider the income. Okay, good, good, no problem. Any questions in your part, Brahim? Yes, um, my question is that your mortgage approval will determine the type of home that you want to purchase. Absolutely. So what we usually do is we have to run something called a gross debt service ratio and a total debt service ratio. So there's certain guidelines that we have to follow as mortgage brokers. So what we want to ensure is that we just give you your top number saying this is the maximum that you can buy at with the down payment you have and the current liabilities that you can in order to be able to have a smooth approval process. Okay, good. I have another question on my end. Sure. Um, when it comes to, again, you know, young people and newcomers, I've heard the question as in how many people you're allowed on deed. Now, being a mortgage um, specialist, when it comes to the banks, are they particular with the amount of applicants that they can have on one particular deed when purchasing a home? Um, we've had up to four. But the one thing you do have to know is we've got some really awesome products. So, for example, <clears throat> we've got something called the Scotia Bank Step Program. And let's say the client's only putting down 20% and we're giving them a mortgage of 80. That's the maximum mortgage you can give on a conventional deal. What happens is if you have more than two people on title, we can't position it as a step product or a product that turns into a home equity line of credit as you pay down your mortgage. So that's just something con to consider. If you're looking for a conventional mortgage, I've seen it go up to four, uh, four people on the mortgage or on the home ownership on the title. Okay. That's good to know. Yeah, it's always good to have access to the equity in your home. This is something, you know, your typical branch representative probably wouldn't tell you. But when you're already going to apply for a mortgage, if you're going to be paying this down monthly, why not have access to the equity in the home via a home equity line of credit? So that's important to know. Only two people on title if you would like access to that. Okay. But normally if you're high risk or if, again, you're with a credit union or say one of those C lenders or whatever, yep. do they still allow access to the equity in your house? Because I think some of those mortgages would not allow you to touch that equity. So if you have a conventional mortgage, whether it be with a credit union, a bank or an alternative lender like a B lender, they don't have products like that, where as you pay it down, you have access to the equity. What we do is as you pay it down, as soon as you've paid it down, let's say at least 5%, we can apply for a line of credit in second position with an alternative lender who has an access to a product like that, no problem. Okay, okay, that's good to know. All right. My, co my last question is you mentioned that in the process of getting mortgage approval, you don't recommend, let's say, for example, getting yourself involved in a car loan or any other loan. Yep. I just wanted to know what, why, why is that? So I'll explain to you how it works. So essentially, when we approve you at your top number, let's say we've told you your mortgage payment is going to be $3,000 a month. And that's yeah. kind of your maximum affordability. If you now go and purchase a car with a car payment of a thousand bucks a month, you've taken away from that three thousand dollar budget of paying for your house, and now mm. you're spending an extra thousand bucks on a car. So the bank might say, "Sorry, we cannot approve you." The best thing to do, I always tell my clients, because it's much easier to get approved for a car loan, as long as the affordability is there. Let us get you the mortgage, close on your house, and then go get a car. Okay. okay. Thanks. That's good to know. That's um, the best strategy. Good. Another question for you, Susie. And again, I have uh, some questions here. Uh, when it comes to what has happened with the high increase in the interest rates, I've had some of my clients now asking me uh, if it goes down, you know, what can, is it possible for me to like break the mortgage and now take advantage of the, you know, the lower rates? I know, of course, I've, I've mentioned to them to touch base with their banks or the providers, see what's in that, you know, the agreement that they currently have. But is that something that you can touch base on that you know can be done? And, and you know, what, how would you advise people going forward? 
Yeah. So what I say to my clients and especially to somebody in that circumstance is it has to be a variable rate product you're in. If you're in a fixed rate, your penalty is going to be astronomical. It may not be worth the change. So that's why it's very important that when you're selecting the type of mortgage product you're going into, that you understand what it means to break that mortgage or what it's going to mean to have to stay in it kind of thing, right? Um, if you're in a variable rate, we can reassess it for you. And what we do is we do an analysis of your mortgage, mortgage. and how much time you have left, principal, principal versus interest payments, what the new rate is, and does it make sense for you? We have options for everybody. We just like to do that analysis in advance to ensure that the penalty you'll be paying is making it worth it for you to change. Okay. Um, and the other thing, I know that um, a few banks are coming out with really good incentives, especially the fact that they see a lot of, like, say, buyers are having a hard time approving. Um, it, it, can you see from your standpoint, you know, anything in that capacity where a lot more lenders coming up with more incentives right now because they see uh, of where the interest rates are? Are they making it a little bit easier in a sense? I know the stress test is still there, but are they making it a little bit easier for qualifiers to get uh, loans per se? They, they are making exceptions on that total debt service ratio we talked about. Even like, you know, your A banks like TD Bank and Scotiabank, they're, they're able to go a little bit higher on their parameters, whereas before, you know, they were very strict. They wanted it at a certain percentage, and now they're allowing people to kind of go over that a little bit if they've got savings, if they've got good fallback, if they've got good income, not too many debts, that kind of thing. But the really neat thing is we've actually got access to lenders, uh, a few credit unions exclusively to our brokerage where they qualify you at the rate they're giving you. So let's say they're giving you 6.7%. They're qualifying you at 6.7 instead of 2% above that via the stress test. And that allows you to purchase a house with, you know, multiple tens of thousands of dollars more than you would be with a conventional bank. So it's always good to check in with us to do that pre-approval so we can give you the options and the solutions that we have. Sorry. And the last question right now is, if one of my clients will get approved today, how long can they hold on to that pre-approval until when we decide to say, contact you and say, okay, fine, we found a home and we're ready to, to go ahead? Um, is there a grace period? Yeah, so what we usually say is 120 days, because at that point, we've checked the credit, we've had the conversation with them that we don't want to see any massive changes in credit. As long as the income hasn't changed, um, essentially the banks are holding the rate for you for 120 days. But the reality is in today's market, we can always do better with different banks. We kind of negotiate and sell it to a different bank. So as long as I say, as long as the income or credit hasn't changed and the rates are kind of still where they're at, you can assume that your pre-approval is safe. Okay. And that means as well, if they're, the rates have gone down, would they also be able to qualify for the lower rates? Yes, absolutely. So if the rates go down, we give them a lower rate. If the rates go up, their rate's secured. Uh, we are actually hoping to see quite a bit of change in the downwards uh, direction in the next year and a half to two years. So that should really help a lot of buyers. Okay. Um, sorry, I have another question that a client That's is okay. asking me here. Um, when it comes to pre-construction, have you seen that there is a, a benefit um, for clients getting homes like that rather than what's on the market right now, especially if they would put an offer in and the bank comes after and, and appraises it and appraises it less? So I, are you seeing that there's more an advantage on and somebody getting a pre-construction over current um, homes on the market? Historically? historically pre-construction was great because you could make some money while it was being built and the value would go up with the rate market that we're in right now and the way that the whole economy is right now in Canada. Um, it's actually quite the opposite. There's a lot of people okay. closing on their new builds and they're not nearly worth what they paid for. But nowadays mm -hmm. the money's in resale. Like that's where the value's holding. That's where you're able to negotiate that's where you're able to see exactly what it's worth in the next 30, mm -hmm. 60, 90 days when you're ready to close. So, you know, if I were a buyer, I'd be going for a resale home nowadays. Okay. Okay. I think that's it on my end. No more questions for me. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much. You're so, you're welcome. so welcome. Thank you for having me. 
No problem. Thank you, Susie. I really appreciate it. And Susie, if anybody wants to get a hold, can you please, um, again, mention yes. how they can do so? Yep. So you've got three methods or website. The first one is davidandsusie.ca, and that's D-A-V-I-D-A-N-D-S-U-Z-I dot C-A. Uh, my direct line, my cell phone, 647-898-7894. And alternatively, via email, which we have, you know, constant access to our email these days. It's very quick and efficient. It's Susie, S-U-Z-I, at oakparkmortgage.com. And, and you mentioned that you do have an application on the website in case they're yep. interested and wanted to know mm -hmm. if they can be pre-approved. They can actually complete that. And then, you, of course, you can get back to them. Absolutely. So as soon as you get on our website, top right-hand corner, there's a little button that says Apply Now. You click on that, it'll take you to the application form, fill it out, just ensure at the end you select my name as the agent and it'll come directly to my email within moments. Okay, and please by all means also mention that it's Sherlyn that you're hoping that, you know, there's a, a contact you. between myself. <laughs> 